All right, everybody. So today I just kind of wanted to share something that, uh, paradoxically, I've only just started and I've also been working a very long time on. So um, I had a space sim project that I worked on for about eight months, and it became this bloated monstrosity uh, because I had no input from anybody else. Uh, so we've scrapped all that. We've started over from the very beginning. And I want to show you all kind of my process. Uh, so this one for day one is just kind of the absolute bare bones. It's just what you see here. You can see we've got a planet, we've got a player, we've got some little engine plumes here. And then uh, over that away, we've got a little testing block kind of just to look at. Um, but as you can see, the sun's kind of in the way. Um, so I'm actually going to change the world environment here real quick and bring back the default panorama per procedural sky just to give it a little bit better look around. Um, the ship here, I'm going to be honest with y'all, is from an asset that I got on itch. The link to that will be in the description. In addition, the link to this will be in the description on itch. I will be posting all of the updates from every video that I make in this series. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got right here. Excuse me. Let's take a look at what we've got right here. Right now you can see we've got these two little doodads up front. We can look around. We can turn around. We can see that there's the earth. It's spinning. Uh, don't worry about the sun. And we also have basic movement. There is uh, no friction. It's going to be a realistic space sim. In the next video we'll actually be adding in gravity. But we have basic movement. We can alter our velocity in any direction and you know move up and down and kind of approach the block uh, and I've been doing this for a while because you know I spent eight months on a project with a similar control scheme but there will be in the future some features to kinda help you match velocities with certain objects um, that'll be for a later video probably much later let's go ahead and close out of this real quick and we'll take a look at our scene tree. So this main tree, we're called main space, uh, consists of just the root node, which is just a regular spatial node. We've got the earth, um, which is an area node. It's got a mesh instance, a collision shape, and then I've also, from the asset library, downloaded the planetary atmosphere shader and apply that. It's just a little thing that does a lot to help make it look a, a lot better. Um, especially whenever you're working with the dark background that it will eventually have. Uh, we've also got a directional light to act as our sun. This will be doing a couple of things but primarily it'll be just the lighting. Um, and then we've got our player node right here. And we'll be taking a look at that in a second. And then we have this mesh instance. Now you may be noticing that the Earth has already got a group attached to it. That is the planets group. This will be used in our gravity calculations in the next video. Um, the planet's atmosphere also has its own script attached. Don't mess with this, but you can mess with these parameters. I'm working with a, a very strange scale, so I've messed with my attenuation density and, and all of that. Um, the actual scale of the earth mesh itself I'm going to probably be fiddling with quite a bit. For right now, uh, the earth is a kilometer in diameter. Um, for those of you that don't do metric, that's around half a mile. Uh, with everything being based in meters, I highly suggest everyone get used to metric. It is a thousand units. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at this player node here real quick, and then that'll honestly be it. There's not a whole lot to this first video. You can see we've named it Test Player. Uh, it has this mesh that I got from this asset, which has all of its own stuff, um, all of its own textures and normal maps and all of that. It's also got a collision shape. Um, which it's been given. Ooh, that's a rough collision shape. We're going to go ahead and delete that. Just so you know, if you are working with areas, rigid bodies, anything that needs a collision shape, you can select the mesh and make a collision shape. In this case, I usually go for convex, multiple convex collision siblings, just because it's not very time consuming operationally um, and it's fairly accurate. Uh, we've also got a camera attached. The camera is sitting right up front because I want this to be like one of those old school first person 
uh, shootery uh, space sims. We've also got a group, or we, well, we've got a spatial node here called engines. This is going to act as a container for all of the special effects associated with the engines. That way, whenever I need to turn them on or off, I can go into the script and just call, you know, engines.getchildren and manually change them all that way. Um, we've also got other groups that I will be using in the future just because I like to think ahead with my node grouping. I know that eventually there will be guns. I know that there will be primary and secondary guns, so I make two groups of them. And I know that you're also going to need an effect for whenever you reverse so that you can like see these engines go off in front of you. Um, so there's a retro engines group. All right, so that's it for the structure, and then the actual code itself is fairly basic as well. We're going to clear this real quick. We're going to drag this back over this way. One thing about Godot that I don't appreciate as much is you should be able to get a little bit more editor space with a single screen if you really wanted um, vertically. Uh, so, so this is just an area, we're extending it, we'll eventually be adding it a class player whenever we make different ships that you can use. Um, and then we have controls for the looking around, some, some variables, we have a look sensitivity, a mouse delta, a field of view limit that'll be used for a zoom function, and a target field of view that's used for a zoom function. Now, as you can see from before, we don't have a zoom function yet. Um, we also have a var, uh, a variable v, which is going to be this object's velocity. Now you may be wondering why I'm using area and not rigid body or kinematic body. And that is because um, when you're working outside of physics process 2D, or if you, when you're working outside of physics process rather, you have a lot more options with how you want your nodes to turn and face each other. Um, it's a lot easier to utilize your, you know, transform interpolations uh, from an area 2D. And then in space, your physical interactions are actually going to be quite limited. If you're working at a large scale, you'll very rarely have collisions um, outside of when you really, really want to, like with a bullet. Um, <clears throat> and physics for that is going to be much simpler to implement. And we don't actually need the full rigid body paradigm, at least... I don't think so. I might change my mind later and have to rework this whole thing. That might happen, but I doubt it. So uh, because we don't have that linear velocity, because we're working with an area, we have this variable v, which is going to be uh, your total velocity. And then you have a thrust. Um, now, uh, whenever you set it ready, you need to capture the mouse so that the mouse is locked in the center of the screen and also hidden. This is how you get those FPS controls. So whenever this node enters the tree, it just locks the mouse and captures it. And then we also have this input event function. What this does is every time you move the mouse, it captures how much, uh, or it reports how much the mouse moves relative to the center of the screen and then that becomes that mouse delta variable from up there. Um, we're going to skip this for a second and move on to just kind of how the mouse causes everything to move. So every time the mouse moves, this mouse delta variable gets updated. And then in your process, you create a new variable, which is rotation, which is a vector 3, mouse delta dot x by mouse delta dot y by 0. You're going to multiply it by your look sensitivity and by your delta so that you get a nice, smooth, interpolated motion. Um, and then you get, so you're going to change your rotation degrees dot x. This is your vertical motion. Um, your bases in 3D are different than in 2D. So your rotation degrees dot x is looking up and down. This is going to be the rot dot x from your mouse, right? You're going to want to clamp that value to negative plus or minus 90 degrees. Sorry, you're going to want to clamp that to plus or minus 90 degrees. Um, the reason why is so that you don't wind up doing backflips uh, and totally mess up all the angles for any calculations that you need later on if you need it to look directly at something. Um, there's a couple of metaphors that you can use, but it's better just to have this clamped so that you can only look straight up and straight down and you can't like flip over. 
Um, and then for your rotation degrees dot y, which is going to be your horizontal turning, uh, it's going to be the same thing. Um, now you want to definitely make sure that you use minus equal values and not plus equal values because you're working in screen space coordinates. Uh, so that's how you get that. And then as far as the actual movement controls, right, we're going to go to our input map. Input map is just the easiest way to do everything. You can always do unhandled inputs if you want and manually code everything in. That's not necessary. You've got a thrust, a retro thrust, a thrust left, thrust right, thrust up, and thrust down. And that's your WASD keys. And thrust up and thrust down are shift and control. Um, there is going to be, in a future video, a method where you can manually rebind all of these in-game from the pause menu. Uh, but we're not there yet um, because this is going to be quite a large project and I'd like small tutorials, small recap videos. So anyway, we're just going to run this up again and um, kind of talk about where I want to see this project going. Like I said, this is going to have uh, gravity in it, which means that everything is going to behave according to Kepler's laws of satellite motion. Uh, if that appeals to any of y'all, the next video is going to be pretty math heavy. Or I'm kind of debating how much I want to simplify the math and how much I want to just tell y'all what it does and not worry about it. Um, obviously, more documentation in the code needs to get put in. Uh, but that's it for that. Like I said, I want to keep these very short and very simple. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please leave them below. And if you want to see the next video, please hit that subscribe button. Nope. F. How do I...